Infinite's multiplayer beta has finally and unexpectedly released, and this time around there are a total of 10 different multiplayer maps available to play. So we did what we try to do best whenever there's some sort of new Halo content, and we dive in and look at every little detail, maybe even overanalyze things a little bit, and of course with this one things were no different, and we found some pretty interesting secrets and easter eggs along the way. So let's take a closer look at what we found so far. But before we get into this video, we want to give a huge thanks to Exter for sponsoring this video. Exter is the world's largest smart wallet brand, and they make some awesome products. They actually sent both of us some wallets to try out. Yeah, even Luke got a wallet, and we've been pretty big fans of how life-changing these wallets are. With Exter wallets, you get quick access to all your cards with sleek leather designs and RFID protection, so your money and identity are always safe. They also have a smart wallet tracker that is trackable worldwide, and the tracker is also solar powered, so it's really easy to charge. Now, if you use our links, shop.exter.com forward slash rocket sloth, you not only help us directly, but you also get a cool and modern wallet with a ton of features. So make sure you check out the link and let us know how you like your extra wallets. So starting things off with the season pass for this new season one of Halo Infinite. On the main season pass page, you can see an iconic quote from Catherine Halsey from the end of Halo Reach. It's a little eulogy from from the final cutscene of the game. This might be an ongoing thing where they use the seasons with some iconic quote from the Halo franchise, as even during the flights, the season zero text had an homage to previous Halo games as well. Over in the training grounds, there is a locker of David Ellis, who is a senior designer at 343, and with the few interactions we've had with him on social media, he seems like a pretty nice dude, so it's cool to see an Easter egg of him. Actually, it seems pretty likely that all of these different names that show up on the lockers or these names on this box here are probably other employees who worked on Halo Infinite and that's something that's really cool. We really love the streets multiplayer map because there's a ton of little tiny details all over the place like these arcade machines which one of them is called Slip Space Invaders and you can see a bunch of Covenant ships and obviously it's being a play on the game Space Invaders and then this other arcade machine is Halo Infinite themed and it has some really good music to it surprisingly and on the side of the arcade cabinet you can actually see Linda's helmet or at least I'm pretty sure that's Linda it could just be another Spartan this next one was actually found by a user on Twitter but apparently in the multiplayer tutorial there's a little Easter egg error code referring to the old Amiga with the guru meditation error code making a small appearance on the multiplayer map deadlock you can actually go all the way inside of the back of the pelican and there's a little quote likely coming from the campaign that shows up next to your radar in the bottom corner, which usually tells you what area you're standing in. Also on the map deadlock, if you capture a flag, this giant anti-air space gun will fire at this ship in the distance and it's just really cool. Going back to streets, there's this bookstore and a couple of books laying around. One of the books is called The Tale of the Lonesome Pigeon, which I don't know what the story is about, but I'm automatically intrigued here and it's written by an Ivan Yakushev. So just being intrigued, I did a little bit of research and found an art station page of an Ivan Yakushev who's a senior 2D artist at a company called Sparasoft. So from there I went to the Sparasoft website and sure enough they actually list Halo Infinite as one of the projects that they are co-developing as a support studio. Then I decided to take it a step further and find this guy's Twitter page and I reached out to him asking if I was the first person to make this connection and discovery and apparently I was so I'm super proud of this but it's so cool that this guy actually managed to just kind of make himself a minor character in the Halo universe. So good for him. Also, besides these books, there's some really interesting magazines on the wall you can take a look at. And if you're looking at other little tiny details, there's some interesting snacks in the vending machine over here, like some chocolate with raisins. Yuck. I really like the Gauss Cherry Energy Drink, which just sounds like the type of power I need in my life. And on streets all over the place for whatever reason, there's this bird that keeps showing up. It's on stickers all over the place. And on this specific kiosk, there's a blue screen of death. And we get our little bird friend once again. We know that on the level Bazaar, we've talked about already how there's a Master Chief mural on one of the walls. And it makes its appearance on streets once again. But there is a really cool Master Chief poster that's just chilling here. 
And I just like the way that the art looks. We know there's going to be a ton of different little secrets and Easter eggs hidden in the customization side of things. And there were some really cool ones in the nameplate section, specifically the I Love Bees nameplate, which I've already talked about. I'm a huge fan of, but also Margaret's Honey, which was the purpose of the original I Love Bees website to advertise the fictional honey company, Margaret's Honey, is the name of this player card background. We've also talked about how they did a little nod to red versus blue with the lightish red armor coating, which is, you know, just pink, but they also have a really cool Warthog Platinum Anniversary coating, which we think is a nod to the classic coloration of a lot of the UNSC vehicles, and it has the text that goes with it. No, I think we're just getting started. If you select a Spartan Mark V core and you navigate over to the silver visor, which is called MIA or missing in action, the text that goes with it is Spartans Never Die, a huge nod to Halo Reach and the greater Halo lore. And on the level of fragmentation, this Forerunner structure also fires whenever a flag is captured, just like we talked about on the map Deadlock. And of course, while we were exploring these maps, we decided to have some fun in the custom game lobby, upping our speed and jump height just to see what we could find along the way. And there's some interesting things we caught that are just kind of fun. Like, for instance, on the level high power, I was able to, on my first try practically, land up on the cliff over here and kind of walk along on this ridge line, which is significantly lower than the rest of the map. It's pretty pointless. There's not a lot you can do with it, but we were able to walk down here for a minute and that was kind of fun. Also, when we were just navigating around, we went inside of one of the bases and found the absolute best discovery in this entire game so far, which is the sandwich. I don't know. I just think it's so funny that there's this random sandwich just in the middle of this random map. And I just want to know the story behind it. I like this room. There's not a lot going on, but I think forever we should just call it the sandwich room. It's not going to catch on, but I'm going to continue to call that the sandwich room. On streets, we found when we jumped up as high as it would let us and see what we could see within the vicinity. Not only do we get to see a little bit more of Mombasa streets and the cool surrounding area, but there's some little nuanced things you catch every once in a while, which are kind of funny. Like this bridge kind of abruptly stops right here and it gives me some Sonic Adventure 2 vibes. On fragmentation, we jumped all the way up onto this cliff here and there's a soft kill barrier. But if you just push yourself past the soft kill barrier a little bit, you can actually get away from it and get to live for a little bit longer. And then we pushed our way back into the map and we were able to get on the inside of this mountainy area where we could see through the walls and stand above the loot cave area that's here. Obviously the glitches we're talking about here don't serve any larger purpose, but for Halo fans like us that like to just look at every little detail as nuanced or random as it can be, stuff like this is so much fun just to discover and go to. It's for my imaginary game of glitch out of the map hide and seek that we'll never actually play, but I'd like to know just in case I ever do end up in a scenario where I have unlimited jump height and speed and I have to hide for a game of hide and seek and we're on this map. I know where I'm hiding. On the Halo Waypoint app, there's actually a couple of armor coatings that have these nods to previous Halo games. Like for Bleached Bone, it says in the end, Keelbugs conquer all. Would you remember to one of our cut Halo enemies video, the Keelbugs were actually an enemy class that would pick up dead bodies all the way back in Combat Evolved. And they were supposed to have some sort of use in Halo 2, but this never actually turned into a thing. So this is a little nod to that cut species. The armor coating Splinter Desert has the little text like wearing a poncho in the desert, which is an homage to the Halo 5 Guardians reveal trailer where we get Poncho Chief. And there's an armor coating called Flash Fjord, which is this one is Craig's favorite, obviously being a nod to the huge Craig meme from when they did the gameplay demonstration a year back. This one's an update to one of the ones that we found on Bazaar where they had all of these different little sticky notes. One of them we thought might've been the Wi-Fi password because we just didn't know the meaning of it. But it it looks like the ADDQD is an homage to an IDDQD cheat code from the Doom series, which is really cool. Also, when we're looking around on Bazaar in this version of the game, we noticed that the no bringing donkeys inside of the Bazaar signs are now nowhere to be found, which does make us wonder if it means that donkeys are fair game now. When we're running around on Aquarius, we actually notice this little secret vent in the middle section of the level that looks like an area that you could slide right through or maybe Spartan charge into. And a lot of us had accidentally died when we were playing through on this map for the first time, thinking that that was an area we can access, which we can't. So maybe one day down the road, they'll open this area up in a variation of the map 
map or when Forge is enabled, we can actually go in there. But when we were looking through the vent, we noticed another sandwich just laying there, which made two sandwiches found so far, and a third sandwich later would be found on the training mission, which made us absolutely determined and convinced that there must be a secret sandwich in every single multiplayer map in this game. So we put together a sandwich search party to try to go through every map and slowly find each and every sandwich, and we hadn't had any luck yet. But if you find a fourth sandwich anywhere, please do let us know because we're still searching. I feel like I will search forever even if they're not actually there because I'm that convinced that there has to be sandwiches secretly everywhere. When we went back to streets again to look for the sandwich, we did notice some interesting things we didn't catch the first time around. Like for instance, this poster of New Mombasa is actually based off of Teyari Plaza from Halo 3 ODST, where all of the magazines were, there's actually a blue wolf emblem, which is an homage to a popular team color and emblem from the Halo 2 days. Also, there's this cool sign where you can get a hollow puppy, a pet you didn't know that you needed and you probably still don't need. And this menu item suspiciously has something available called D chips, which does make us wonder if this is a reference, maybe a subtle reference to the chips dubbo. I don't know. Maybe it's a bit of a stretch, but I'd like to dream that maybe this is a little reference right there to the very popular Chips Dubbo Easter egg. This comes from a long line of voice Easter eggs from previous Halo games where there's this just laid back, chill Australian Marine who a lot of you probably experienced and maybe just didn't know that his name is Chips Dubbo because he yells it sometimes. He appeared from CE through Reach, so it's a pretty popular character. But that's what we found so far as far as new Easter eggs and secrets that we didn't catch during that first flight all the way back in the summer. Did you guys find any that we didn't catch or did any of these surprise you? Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Also, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on for more videos like this. We'll see you guys all next time with a brand new video.